you know, it's been a while since I've been able to go to any kind of event that was fish related. But I got to go to Fishtoberfest down in Portland. Let's have a little talk about was it worth it? Should you go next year? And what was it like? Hello, everyone. This is Bentley. And today I wanted to talk pretty fresh off of my trip to Fishtoberfest about my experience there, uh, why I filmed nothing while I was there, and just whether or not it was interesting enough to where I think you should go next year. And, uh, you know, there's some caveats there, right? For some of you, it's going to be travel. Is it even worth the travel versus a, a much larger event like Aquashella? Well, let's talk about those things. First off, what was Fishtoberfest? This was put on by the Greater Portland Aquarium Society, and uh, a lot of work came in from Danikin Aquatics, which is big props to them, especially Kenny E. Good work, my man. Uh, you know, just they really worked together and even some last minute stuff to make sure that this event fired off. Thankfully, the hotel is right by the airport that they used. And if they use that again, it's actually fantastic because you could, if you were flying in, uh, fly in, take a shuttle directly to the hotel and you're right there. The hotel is actually pretty nice <laughs> and uh, not, not terribly expensive. So some pluses there, but let's talk about the real good stuff and a little bit of bad. Depending on your opinion, this might be bad, but to me, it was really good. It felt like kind of just a bigger swap meet. And what I mean is there's a vendor room and then a speaker room. But other than that, it was more just a gathering of a ton of fish nerds talking, having fun. There were some vendor tables. There was stuff being sold. There was some fish tubers there selling some stuff like uh, Alex from Secret History was selling some of his art. And uh, I was there with a few plants, not very many. He had uh, Lucas Bretz there with some amazing like manzanita that he had gone out and collected. And it was just fun. You know, Danikin Aquatics, they were there selling some of their fish. There was a bunch of other vendors local. Uh, Pisces Aquarium, which is a store that's out in um, Bend. Uh, I got to talk to them. There were some old nice people. I actually bought something from them that I should go like grab and put on camera, but... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I really didn't spend a lot while I was there. I bought only one thing. Uh, and, well, two of one thing, but one one was for mostly for my lady. Uh, but, you know, the big thing is, for those who maybe they can only afford to go to one thing a year, you'd have to ask yourself, do you want some big, super production-oriented thing like Aquashella? Then this is not the event for you. But if you want something that's a little more low-key, you have a lot more opportunity to actually like, sit and talk with some of the YouTubers who are present, which was mostly Pacific Northwest people outside of Dan from Dan's Fish and Lucas Bretz, then this is totally an event for you. I mean, it was, it was great. It reminded me, and this is going to sound like really weird, but I can remember going to like the Emerald City Comic Con when I was a kid, when it was basically just like not popular to be a comic book person at all. And you've got like maybe 200 people that come through that place for the whole weekend. But you had all these artists there. I can remember as a young man meeting Todd McFarland, right? The uh, creator of Spawn and all sorts of other things. He's amazing. Like now, uh, like action figures and stuff like that. And I got to sit and talk with the guy for 30 minutes because there was like no one. And it's an experience. It's so strong in my head that I don't like big conventions because that feeling, that amazing feeling when I was young and into other hobbies has pushed itself forward to me as an adult. I loved Fishtoberfest. The opportunity to just relax, sit and talk. I mean, I had people that even though I'd met them before or had never met them, either way, we could sit and talk for 30 minutes at a time. Easy. It wasn't a problem. You have a couple of people drop by and, you know, you have like a little interlude and then you go back to talk to them and stuff like that. It was just fantastic. It was this fun social event. It didn't feel like a convention. <laughs> I want to do this because like, you know, nowadays you think of like Aquashella or the aquatic experience, all these huge events that are like, you got to go. It's so amazing. All this huge. And they do this. And they got and this crazy thing over here and that over there. This is a room full of fish nerds. Hanging out talking, 
buying a little bit of fish, buying some plants, buying some other stuff, selling some stuff, talking. It was fantastic. I loved it. It was free. It was free entry. You didn't have to pay for anything. The only thing you had to pay for is if you wanted to be a vendor, you had to buy your table. And the tables are cheap. <laughs> it's just like, I, it was, it was crazy to me. That just, it was so fun. And I, I cannot give enough credit because for a first year event, Kenny and, and uh, Roland, who's the vice president of the greater Portland Aquarium society and just everybody from uh, G pass that was there. You guys did a fantastic job. The presentations were good. I heard nothing but positive comments out of people walking out of the talks uh, it started with Jason from Redfish Bluefish, then Alex, uh, and then uh, I think it was either Lucas or Dan that went next. I can't remember the tail end of schedule. It went all the way until uh, Lawrence Ken, who was last, which you guys have heard me multiple times. If you get an opportunity to see Lawrence speak, you go. It's worth it. There are people that drove from Sacramento, a nine and a half hour drive to be there, and they just hung out with us. The night before the event, so Saturday night, I got in, I get to the hotel, and I, I call up. <laughs> I start calling up some of the fish nerds that I know are there. I'm like, hey, let's meet in the restaurant. Let's just get everybody we can down to sit and talk and hang out. And, uh, you know, for the people who drank, they had they had some drinks. And for the people who didn't, we just sat and talked. It was fun. Candy from Aquarium Co-op was there. Uh, Pop Steenfall was there. Lucas, Dan, uh, a bunch of people from the Portland area. And then just some people that don't even have YouTube channels like uh, Luke the guy who came up with his girlfriend in Sacramento. I'm sorry, I forgot your lady's name. I apologize on that one. We know I'm terrible with names, but like, there's just awesome people, right? I sat and I talked to the guy. <laughs> he I got pointed out. It's like, that's the plant guy down there. Go talk to him. And we sat and talked for like, I swear, 40 minutes about his tank and how he could like break up some of the way that his stuff was planted and change some of the color and, and what kind of rock he could use. And so, and it, all low tech. We were just sitting there talking about ideas for his tank off two pictures. It was fish nerds being fish nerds, man. It was great. Now, the downside, of course, is that if you want something that feels more like a big convention, a big, massive event, there's lots of scheduled things and stuff. This year, that's not what that was. Now, of course, it'll change, it'll alter, and hopefully it'll grow over time, and maybe it will become that. And maybe I won't be quite as enchanted with it, but if you really just want to hang out, this is the hangout. This was amazing. Uh, let me let me talk about some of the other things. I guess like the the negative, <laughs> if you will. It's hard to really call it a negative because I had such a positive experience. But uh, because it's in the Northwest, you know that it's a little harder for some people to travel to. It's not as easy as like something in say Indianapolis or. Uh, even Las Vegas, where there's always cheap flights out there. Flights aren't necessarily as cheap if you're trying to come from like Florida or, or Tennessee for the, the Tennessee fish mob or something like that, right? Then you've got tons of events out there. But it it was nice to have an event in the Northwest because we really don't have very many. We have kind of this many. <laughs> and now we have one, which is fantastic. But in the end, should you go I think the answer is really simple. If you want something that's a little more small and casual feeling where you can just sit and talk with fish nerds, this is that event. And there's others like that, like Keystone Clash, the big like auctions and all that kind of stuff, right? You Each event, the smaller events have their like their charm and their allure, right? You, you've got the big, the big, the swap that happens in, uh, in Chicago, and all that kind of stuff are like, uh, was it ACA, right? Uh, I can't remember the name of the event. Somebody's going to kill me in comments. That's fine. But, but uh, seriously, you know, it was just, it was a fantastic time hanging out with people. I, I know that I gave away like easily probably about $400 worth of plants. Uh, and those all rare crypts. I had like Crypt Nuri Rosen Maiden. I had Crypt Jacobs and I Pinks. Uh, and I was just giving them out. I sold a little bit, had a few people who were like, no, I have to give you money. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but, you know, I didn't, I, my goal wasn't to sell stuff when I went down there. My goal was just to hang out and talk. So I gave a ton of stuff away. I sold a few things, but that basically all they did was cover my hotel cost. 
<laughs> I wasn't was there to make money. Uh, and, you know, we had all these great talks. I got to sit and talk with Dan from Dan's Fish, which I got to I got to make sure that guy goes to Louisville. I know I'm trying to say it right. I always say Louisville because I got an uncle named Louie and that's just in my head. I can't help it. But I got to get that guy out there because he's just such a hoot. And, you know, I got to meet a lot of people that I probably would have never otherwise met. And that's going to be what's in my memory forever. It's just this fun, casual talk event where we got in there in the morning. I just because of my drive and my work schedule, I left about three o'clock. But in the in like that eight to three p.m. time frame, I got to meet a lot of people. I got to have some great conversations. I got to help some people. I got to meet some fans. I even got to buy a couple things. It was pretty awesome, and I loved every minute of it. That's it. This is this is not some like crazy video. I just wanted to share my experience and and why I didn't film. Okay, let me. I forgot to include why I didn't film. Uh, I was talking too much, plain and simple. Every every moment where I I thought to myself because I took my camera gear with me just in case. And at first I was like, oh, I should I should I should try to do some kind of video. I should kind of do what something I did at the AGA. And I was like, no, that'll ruin the fun. None of us YouTubers really filmed. I think the only person who did anything was like some small live streams. So like Chris from Multi Tank Addiction did like a live stream walking around the room. But like Bob didn't film. Alex didn't film. Dan didn't film. Jason didn't film. I didn't film. Lucas didn't film. <laughs> we did some live streams like Danikin Aquatic stuff. But I think all of us were just having too much fun, relaxed and hang hanging out to even like want to do the YouTuber thing. Right. It was just. It was fun, dude. It was so fun because it was so chill. Yeah, I think if it was like a big thing where there's all these displays all over the place and you got all these like big, big companies there, like your, your flu balls and all that kind of stuff or Fritz and that, and they're putting all these, this, this glitz and this glam on to like prop their brand up or whatever the heck. I think then you're like, it's almost obligatory. Well, I got to film this, but this was just so, so casual and so relaxed that none of us wanted to film we just wanted to hang out meet people and chat and that's what it was uh a couple of people that i saw I, i'm gonna try and remember as many as i can just sit. we know that i'm terrible with names right i'm really good with faces but some longtime viewers uh kevin leong who was there it was super great to just sit and chat with you for a little bit guy thank you so much for being there uh Jason from Centralia, you know who you are. It was good to see you again. All the, the G-Pass people, you know, Roland, Kenny E, Danikin, Danny, uh, and uh, Kim, which is Roland's wife. Just all the nice people that I met down there. Uh, Luke, who came up from Sacramento, and, and his uh, significant other. You're just wonderful people. It was nice to be able to chat with you. The folks, uh, Ashley, and I didn't get the rest of the gang, but I got to sit and I had breakfast for a little while with Ashley from Pisces Aquarium. You guys seem like you have a fantastic shop. I'm glad that opening a fish store in the middle of human malware has gone well for you and that you continue to see success. I hope I get an opportunity to come see your store at some point. Uh, some of the people that were part of the Willamette Valley Fish Club it was really cool to meet some of you too. Oh, man, there's too many. The YouTubers know. You guys know. I hope to see you all again. At the, hopefully, we're all in Kentucky in July of 2022, the very last weekend. I'm going to be there. Guaranteed. I'm there. I hope to see someone else there, too. Maybe you. Watch. Hey, you. Right there. Right there. So my hands are not even lit properly. But you. <laughs> I hope to see you all there. No Begatron stuff here. Just as always, thank you so much for watching. And stay awesome.